way the figures won't make any money giving away a free meal like that, do you? Well, he's not getting rich on you, brother, that's for sure. <laughs> Joseph, the inner man must be taken care of. Absolutely. If that inner man ever got out, he's big enough to take on the both of us. <laughs> All we got left to do is pick up that sugar and grain. Come on. Right. Horse Cartwright. Your time has come. There is no escaping. It is time, Horse Cartwright. How does she know who I am? I don't know. Let's go find out. Joe. It is time to have your palm read, Horse Cartwright. How did you know my name, anyhow? Madame Adela knows all. Well, go ahead. Why don't you let her read your palm? You got nothing to lose. Oh, but Joe, this whole thing's a bunch of Tom foolishness. Such talk is foolishness. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with her. Don't talk foolish. After all, I, I think you probably have a fascinating palm. Of course, with the size of this hand, it may take two or three sessions, ma'am, but I'm sure you can figure it out. we got things to do now. Come on. Then you will die. I'm gonna miss you, Hawks. You mock my powers. It is easy for you. It is your brother who is in danger. Yeah. That stuff sure is silly, isn't it? Yeah, silly. It's amazing that people still believe in that sort of thing. Yeah, amazing. And you know that it's sad that people will actually spend money on that kind of foolishness. Yeah, it's sad. What does it say? I see a tall man. He is handsome. His hair is gray. He seems disturbed about something. Yeah, that'd be our Paul. He's disturbed because we ain't home them supplies yet. Come on, Joe. Yes, yes, that would be the reason. Yeah, well, let's go. Wait! Wait. I see a woman. Oh, yeah? Go on, go on. Is she pretty? No. No, she is not pretty. She is beautiful. Oliver, go on, go on. Ah, oh, yes, yes, I see her clearly now. She is tall, statuesque. Her hair is golden like the sun. Her eyes are sparkling like the stars. The moment you meet, she will fall in love with you. Yeah? <laughs> what I see is true. All that I say shall happen. You mean I'm really going to meet this gal? With hair as golden as the sun. With sparkling eyes. <sighs> it could happen now, Dad Murray. Come on. Well, I wouldn't stake your life on it. <gasps> What's, what's the matter? It what is nothing. Never mind. The reading is over. But wait a minute. You just... The started... reading is over. One dollar a quarter, please. A dollar a quarter? You said just a dollar. I... With your hand, you need a rabbit's foot. Yeah, I know. Please go. Thank yeah. you. Come on, Joe. See, Austin, then there's this phrenology word. I study the bumps on your head. Yeah. Now, figure you let me whap you one good with an axe hail on top of the head, and you'll have a fortune will make you sit up and take notice. No, I don't want to stuck now. That stuff you know better than that. Get it. Go. Up. 
So watch where you're going, you clump. You're as gold as the sun. Yeah, honey. Big sparkly eyes. I'm so sorry I didn't see you. Here, let me help you. No, ma'am, that's... It's all right. I didn't hurt you, did I? No, I'm, I'm fine. I'm Kathleen. Kathleen Walker. I'm happy to meet you, Miss Walker. I'm Hoss Cartwright. I'm happy to meet you, Mr. Cartwright. Yeah, you can just call me Hoss. <laughs> you can just call me Kathleen. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, that's my little brother, little Joe Cartwright. Kathleen? Ka Kathleen? You aren't married, are you, Hoss? No, ma'am, not a bit. Are you courting? Uh huh. Not so as you've noticed it, no, ma'am. Why? Because I want you to court me. <laughs> you want me to court you? Would you, Hoss? Would you? Here. Oh, Papa, I want you to meet Hoss. Don't worry, Kathleen. I'll handle this. Oh, well, Papa, he wasn't. Oh, no, listen, no standing up for him. I know his type. Are you getting a wagon? Uh, I'll handle this, Romeo. Romeo? I ain't no ladies' man. Papa, I saw what you were trying to do. I got eyes. Now get in the wagon, like I said. Now, no man makes a proper advances to my daughter without answering to me, hey, John sir. Walker. Oh, now, you, him him you stay proper. out of this. You ain't gonna talk yourself out of this one. I'm gonna give you the beating of your life. Oh, come on now. I ain't gonna fight a guy your size. Don't you worry about my size. I whip men twice your size. Well, nevertheless, I... Uh, 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 uh. Now, oh. get up and fight. Uh, I knew I had you figured out right. No backbone. Now, I'll let that be a lesson to you. And you stay away from my Kathleen. Yes, sir. I sure will. And get up, my brain. Uh, 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 uh. Sure does hit hard for a little man, don't he? Yeah. He hits hard for a little mule, I mean. Uh, oh, hey, Joe. Did you see the way that guy looked at me? Yeah. yeah I saw it, but I don't believe him. It's just like that made him, if Della said it would. You know, maybe she's got something after all. Well, maybe she was right about Kathleen, but she sure forgot to mention the father. Oh, Ooh, that's gonna be so. You better get some beefsteak on that. Yeah, as soon as we get home. Hey, here comes Seth. I'll get that order filled. Hey, Seth! Huh? Can you get this order filled for me real quick? We gotta get on our way. Oh, sure can, little Joe. Five sacks of grain and two sacks of sugar? Right. Well, I'm out of grain. I haven't got any sugar either. What, you, you sold out of both of them? That's right, sold out. That new man, John Walker, came in with his daughter and bought out all my grain and sugar. That's just great. Now, what are we going to tell Paul? What are we going to tell Paul? We'll tell him they're sold out of it, that's all. I got a load of supplies coming in the morning. Thanks, Seth. You know, Joe, this is all your fault. We should have come here straight away, just like I wanted to in the first place. What do you mean it's my fault? I'm not the one who had my fortune told by that, that Madame Adela. Not to mention that mess you got into with Kathleen and her father. You saw Madame Adela Hoss? Ain't she a marvel? She predicted I'd sell out of grain and sugar. Oh, come on. Don't tell me you believe in that stuff, too. Well, you ain't walking out of here with any sugar, are you? She's truly a marvel. Don't you think so, Hoss? Yeah, yeah. She's, she's a marvel, Seth. Come on, Joe. Let's go home. Oh. Just about to come into town looking for you. What took you so long? Oh, wait, were we gone long, Pa? Were we gone long? Can't you fellas ever go into town, go right into town, and come right back? Where are the supply, Mr. Hoss? Oh, up saying we didn't get them. You see, Paul, Seth was all out. Yeah, no, no, no grain, no sugar. Yeah. You're all out, and you came back empty, right? Yeah, well, there's going to be some tomorrow, though. He said he'd have a shipment in there tomorrow. Well, pick it up first thing in the morning. Right. All right, first thing in the morning, you go into town and pick up those supplies. Yes, sir. sir. No sugar. No pie, no dessert, no nothing. 
been like that all day. Why can't you? What happened to your eye? Well, it's funny you should ask, Paul. Uh, wait a minute. Don't tell me. I have a feeling I shouldn't know. Your coffee, little Joe. Ah, thank you, Hopsey. I'm gonna stay up and read for a while. Pa's gone to bed. I'm <coughs> saying, <coughs> what's the matter with that coffee? No sugar. Yeah, well, no, <coughs> no sugar is one thing, but what you put in it? Chinese sweet, vinegar root. You know, like you bring Hopsey sugar. You wear a sake, we do guide hall. And you take your feet off the table. I wonder if he knows what he's saying. Oh, Madame Adele. I must talk to your brother at once. It is a matter of life and death. Life or death? Yes, life or death. Life or death. Well, I'll get him. Why don't you make yourself at home? Thank you. Hey, horse! Yeah. You got a visitor. Who is it? It's that lady you met in town today. She alone? She sure is. I'll be right down. talk to you at once. It is urgent. What about? In all my years of fortune telling, I have always told the truth. You mean what you told me ain't the truth? Of course I told you the truth. I just did not tell you all. Yeah, we know you left out Kathleen's father. Yeah. I am telling you, Craig Bonner is the man to fear. You have heard of Craig Bonner. Craig Bonner? Craig, oh, Craig Bonner! Craig, Craig Bonner, the, the gunfighter. Everybody's heard of him. Today, when I read your palm, I saw danger in this man. At first, I did not want to tell you all that I saw. At last, I feel better. Now that the whole truth is out, a thorn is lifted from my heart. Uh, madam, wait a minute. What, uh, what's this Craig Bonner got to do with me? <laughs> <sighs> Craig Bonner rides to Virginia City for one reason. 
to kill Hoskatrite. <laughs> that this Madame Adela makes money by scaring people like you. Look, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. She's gonna show up in a couple of days. She's gonna tell you she'll protect you from this Craig Bonner as long as you cross her palm with a little silver. Yeah, maybe so, Joe, but that bird, she's been right about everything else. Now, we ought to try reading her palm sometime. I'll tell you right now, it's gonna say right across it, E Pluribus Unum. You thought to the right. Nobody can tell future by looking at the palm. You're absolutely right, I'm saying. That is all hoglash. Then I had to hogwash. That's why I say it, hog lash. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what I've been trying to tell. Now, this is only way to tell future. Oh, come on, Hop Sing. Come on, Joe. We got things. Well, sticks show what happened in future. Oh, come on, Hop Sing. I mean, you're, you're being just as bad as this Madame Adela. You're wrong. She, Madame Adela, come lately. Chinese been telling future since long before Great War in China. Now, you drop sticks, Mr. Horse. Come. Where they fall is how everything going to be for you. Well, if it doesn't work out, we can always play tiddlywinks. All right, Hopsy, I'm going to do it, but not because I believe it. Just trying to understand and be nice, that's all. I'll do it. <laughs> so, uh, now, what do they say? I know sticks will tell. Yeah, but what do they tell? They say somebody coming to Virginia City to kill you. And don't try it again. Madela, I foretell the future. Your life is in great danger, Craig Bonner. I know, I know. Get that black cat out of here, lady. You know nothing. There is more to be told. Come to my tent at three o'clock. Three o'clock. Your life depends on it. Well, checking what? Oh, for strangers. Oh, Hoss, come on. Are you still are you still worrying about that gunfighter business? Joe, I ain't worried about no gunfighter or nobody else. It's just to we'll make sure that's all. Well, look, this is nonsense. Now, nobody can predict the future, right? Am I right? Right. All right, then let's go in and get the supplies before something happens. Yeah. What do you mean before something happens? <laughs> Oh, good morning, boys. <clears throat> good morning, Seth. <laughs> morning, Seth. We uh, come in to pick up them supplies. Well, let's see. That was five sacks of grain and two sacks of sugar, right? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, and, and Pa wants some pipe tobacco, too. Well, I'll have it for you as soon as the supply wagon gets here. You mean it ain't here yet? Oh, it's a little late. Be an hour or two. 
I'm sorry, but these things happen. Uh, well, what do we do now? Well, with that burner, we can't go back home without it. So might as well just wait around here, huh? Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we go down and pick up the mail and then go over to the saloon and have a beer? All right. Just one beer, though. I don't want nothing else to go wrong. What could go wrong? Two fellas having a beer. <laughs> Hardly anybody ever gets killed in the saloon. Hey, Dean, got any mail for us? You see the stranger? Uh, Joe, <laughs> that's see you in town today, too, ma'am. I'm sorry about your eye. Oh, that's all right, ma'am. It ain't too sorry anymore. Well, thank you, Dean. Sometimes Papa treats me like I was a little girl. You don't think of me as a little girl, do you, Hoss? Uh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. Not at all. Don't you think I'm old enough for courting? Yes, ma'am. Will you court me, Hoss? <laughs> if you really want me to. <laughs> oh, Hoss, oh. oh, I want you to. More than anything, I want you to. But what about your Paul? You know, I got a funny feeling he won't like me much. Oh, he will once he gets to know you, Hoss. It's just that since Mama died, it's just been me and Papa. I'm all he has. He, he just doesn't want anything to happen to me. Yeah, well, the way he looks after you, ma'am, there ain't much likelihood of anything happening to you. <laughs> Where uh, is your Paul now? Well, he's over at the bank taking care of some business. You do like me just a little bit, don't you, Hoss? Well, I, I like you a bunch. <laughs> Will you come by the house tonight? Well, yes, ma'am. I'd love to. But uh, what about your Paul? Oh, well, I'll take care of it. I'll talk to Papa. Is 8.30 too late? No, ma'am. 8.30 is just fine. Oh, dear. There's Papa. Hospital. Will you look your very best tonight? I want you to make a good impression on Papa. Yes, yes. Bye. Yes. Hotel stoop. Yeah, who's he? That's Greg Bonner. He's reputed to be the greatest gunfighter in this whole territory. Oh, yeah. Water, Hoss, you're looking a little pale. Oh, Lordy. How doing, brother? Joey's here. Hmm? He's here. Supply wagon? Good. No, no, him. Him? Who's him? Greg Bonner, that's who. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. I just seen him with my own eyes. Well, what's he look like? Well, he looks like something I don't want to get messed up with, that's for sure. That burn everything that Madame Adela said's come true. Oh, now, Hoss, come on. Will you relax? He's probably just passing through. Joe, she ain't been wrong about nothing. Well, what are you gonna do? Well, I, I want to stay away from him, that's for sure. 
Hey, Roy. Roy, come here a minute. Excuse me. What's up? What's that fella doing in town, anyhow? Well, he's looking for someone in town, but he won't say who. What's the matter, Hoss? You coming down with a grip or something? No, I'm I'm just fine, Roy, just fine. Hey, listen, Roy, what do you, what do you know about him? Well, just that he's supposed to be about the fastest gun around. Yeah, well, he must be wanted somewhere for something. Yeah. Nothing that I know of. I've heard tell he's killed about 12 men. 13 to be exact, but there was all fair fights. Well, boys, I'll see you later. Thirteen? Thirteen. That's an unlucky number. Yeah. If I was him, I'd kill another guy just to get off that number. Yeah. I'd know that perfume anywhere. Uh, what are you doing here? What am I? It's me, Craig Bunner. What's all this old hello business? Well, I just didn't expect to see you, that's all. <laughs> Surprised, huh? Oh, am I? <laughs> How's about giving your fiance a big kiss? Well, not, not here, Craig. Why not? You're my girl, aren't you? You ain't been fooling around with any other guys, have you? No, of course not. Well, what do you think I am? A woman. Now, I come nearly 400 miles to find you, and I ain't in no mood to play games. Well, I'm not playing games, Greg. Not with you, honey. Well, see, I came to town because I, I had this appointment at the, at the dressmaker, and I, I'm, I'm having this dress made. It's red, your favorite color. That's good. Red's my favorite color. Now, you wear it tonight because I'm coming calling. I've got something mighty important I want to talk over with you. Uh, well, uh, see, I'm late for the dressmaker now, Craig, and... And you know how they are about appointments, so I'll see you goodbye. Wait! Where do you live? Women. Hey, hey, come on, will you stop being so nervous? You're gonna break out in a rash. Brian, just walk naturally. He doesn't know who you are. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, clumsy, ain't he? Madame Adela. Reckon what he's gonna do in there. You know, maybe he's gonna get his palm red. Yeah, his gun hand. 
I wonder what it says. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> You are standing on the street, Main Street. You are facing a man, a big, strong man. You are wearing a gun. He is wearing a gun. You are faster than he is. But you do not win the fight. I see you lying very still in the street. You are bleeding. And your eyes are closed. Am I dead? This I cannot foretell. Only that you are bleeding. I can't stand the sight of blood. It makes me sick. There is only one way to escape your fate. How's that? You must leave Virginia City. Go far, far away. You must leave at once. Today. You mean run? Yes, for your life. Craig Bonner, don't run from man nor beast. How much time have I got? Time is running out. The man you will meet is Hoss Catwright. He is a very dangerous man. You must run quickly. If you meet him... If I meet him, I'll kill him. Uh, what happened? I just shot myself in the foot. I'm serious. You're delirious is more like it, isn't it? Papa, this is different. It's different about it, don't it? Well, this is it's true love. It's, it's a pure love. And I'm reborn. Just one more time, Catherine, please. Just once more. Well, oh, there's nothing new about moonshining. This is not moonshining. Why, this ingenious machine. It's going to create an elixir of the ages. It's going to be Dr. John Walker's. Infinite bromide. Just think what that will mean to mankind. Just think what it will mean to me. It's the dream of my life. No more two-bit schemes. And Aunt Adela, she can give a fortune telling. And you and she and I will travel. We'll be rich. And what's that got to do with Hoss Cartwright? Why, everything. Hoss has got money. And you as Hoss's fiance. You'll have access to that money. We can't do anything about this dream without Hoss's money. You, you wouldn't turn your back on your poor father, would you? Papa, I just want to live my own life. What? Married to some broken down two-bit gunfighter who find himself shot in the belly in some back alley someday? I love Craig. It seems to me you told me that you'd never marry a man who totes a gun. Papa, what am I going to do? I'm so mixed up. I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm almost finished with our elixir. And when it turns to that golden hue, your Aunt Adele and I, we're going to go on the road and we'll make a fortune. And what about me? You'll be free as a bird. You can marry anybody you want. Please, Kathleen, please. Just one more time. This is really the last time. I promise you. No more schemes. As soon as I finish this one. Agreed? Agreed. Thank you very much, Mrs. Kane. Good day. Hey, sir. The supplies come in yet? No, sir. Yeah, about 20 minutes ago. Ah, oh, good. You just kill it for that green sugar as we'll pick it up. Right. Well, hey, don't forget Farm's pipe tobacco. Yeah, and the pipe tobacco. Well, the tobacco I can let you have, but I'm out of grain and sugar again. What? That's right, Hans. How can that be? You said the wagon just came in 20 minutes ago. Well, that's true, little Joe, but uh, John Walker came and bought all my grain and sugar. Just getting started, I guess he's kind of short of supplies himself. 
Well, doggone it, Seth. You knew we were coming back here. Why don't you save yeah. some of it for us? Business is business. And in my business, first come, first serve. Well, thanks a lot. Well, now what do we do? Well, that burn it. We go back home without it, that's all. Paul sure is going to be sore, though. I can say that again. Wait, don't forget your pa's tobacco. Thanks a lot, Seth. Hey, you are. Yeah, thanks. I'd hate to go home empty-handed. Tell your pa there'll be a load of fresh supplies in the morning. And don't be late. Business has sure been good. Fine. Better fix up the bond, too. Seth was all sold out. Yep. Sold all out. All sold out. No right. sugar, no grain. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the supply wagon didn't come in. Is that is that correct? No. No, it did. It came in. <laughs> oh, the supply wagon came in. And what happened? Well, Paul, it, it got there about an hour late, see, and old Seth said we might as well hang around and wait, so we went up to the saloon and waited. And had yourselves a couple of beers. No, 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 just, just one. I mean, he, he had one, and then I had one. I see, one beer each. Then what happened? Well, Dad, Bernie Paul, when we got back over there at the store, the, the wagon had come and gone, and Seth has already sold out again. I see, he's just sold out again. No grain? No grain. No sugar? No sugar. Didn't bring anything back, is that correct? I don't know. We, uh, we, uh... Oh, you did bring something back. What's that? Uh, uh, you pipe tobacco. Oh, my pipe tobacco. A whole lot of it. Well, isn't that nice of you? I have some advice for you. Give that pipe tobacco to Hop Singh. It might help allay his feelings. He's been waiting for those supplies for two days. It wasn't the best I thought it was going to be. You always chew that. <laughs> well, I got the flowers, Hoss. Don't ask me where I got them. Where'd you get them? Well, you know that planter box Hop has been working on all spring? Oh, Joe, he's mighty proud of them flowers. Well, we had to get some kind of a bouquet for Kathleen. Yeah, but if he finds out about it, he, he won't feed us for six months. Well, now, what's more important, you missing a few meals or, or making Kathleen happy? Now, that ain't a fair question, is it? Everything is fair in love and war. Now, here, that's your buggy weight. Yeah. How do I look? You look beautiful. You look absolutely beautiful. Really? Kathleen sees in you, there sure is a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. Come on, let's go, you late. Right. Wait, Joe, Joe. You sure now? I mean. You couldn't look any better. Believe me. Yeah. But how? You just tell me how a man can shoot himself in his own foot. Believe me, it wasn't easy. The doctor said he would be laid up for a week. Oh, that's great. That's just dandy. You sure messed things up, didn't you? I did. Yes, you. You're supposed to scare him out of town. Not cripple him so he can't even run around the block. How was I to know he was so clumsy? Isn't he supposed to be the big gunfighter? And now you tell me Kathleen is sweet on him. You're supposed to be able to predict the future, aren't you? Why, you fake you. Fake, am I? Why, you miserable excuse for a brother. All right, now, sis, calm down, calm down. It's not going to do us any good standing here yelling at each other. Now, what I'm worried about is Craig Bonner going to stay put. Just a minute. 
Just a minute, dear. Don't be so impatient. Craig! You wasn't expecting someone else, was you? Oh, no. Uh, what happened? I had an accident. An accident? Look, it's a long story, and I just assume not go into it right now. I think I'd better sit down. Oh, well, uh... Flowers. You know I get sneezy around them. Yes, dear. Flowers. Craig, don't you think that... I think I'd better sit down. It's a good idea. Here. Ah. Uh. The chocolate. Chocolates. You know I get itchy around them. Oh. Oh, Craig, what am I going to do with you? Is there anybody in the house? No. We're all alone. Why? Craig, you're wearing glasses. You noticed. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Honey, who's that? Oh. What's the matter? Oh, it's 8.30, Craig. So? It's 8.30. So what are you getting so nervous about? You act like you got a keg of powder in your bustle. I think I have. Who is that? Uh, I'll, uh, I'll go see. Get rid of whoever it is. Craig, do you trust me? You're a woman? No. Well, you'll just have to because I can't. Ow! You I stepped on my that. sore foot. Please, get but... Please, Craig, no matter right. what happens, no matter what you hear, that you'll trust me. Please, promise. <sighs> Women. You look beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, is your Paul anywhere about? Oh, well, he's gone into town. He'll be back soon. Come on, sit down. Yes, sir. <laughs> Bless you. That wasn't your Paul? Oh, uh, he had to go into town. He'll be back soon. Well, who's that? Oh, he must have um, been the dog. He's been sick. Hoss, uh, I told Papa he was wrong about you and that I'd invited you out here. Yeah? What, uh, what did he say to that? Oh, he said he was looking forward to meeting you. Yeah, I'll bet he is. Oh, no, he is, Hoss, really. You're sure? Oh, if there's one man I know, it's Papa. And if he didn't want you to come, he'd have said so. Hoss, you were telling the truth, weren't you, when you said you weren't courting anyone but me? Well, yes, ma'am, I was telling the truth. You're the... You're the only one I'm courting. Glasses. Here, glasses, glasses. Here. And you really like me? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Do you really mean that, Oz? Sure, I mean it. And you care? I mean, you really care? Yes, ma'am. I, I like you a bunch. Oh, Oz. <laughs> my errand, too. Kathleen! Papa! Wait, Mr. Walker! Th Mr. Walker, this ain't what it looks like. It ain't, huh? And what are you doing here alone with my daughter? Well, it seems to me you've got her in a mighty compromising position. But, and it also seems to me that there's only one honorable solution, and that's marriage. Boss, we have no choice. I've... I've heard enough. No, Craig. I've come here after ten years of courting you, Kathleen, to take you as my bride. My eyes have gone bad, and I've given up gunfighting forever. I even bought that little ranch, just like you wanted, but when I get here, what do I find? You've given up gunfighting? Why didn't you tell me, Craig? You never gave me a chance, fooling around with this yahoo here. Oh, Craig, you don't understand. I understand what I hear, and I hear you're gonna marry this no-good galoot. Well, I've heard enough. I'm leaving forever. Bless you. Oh. 
Oh, Craig. Craig. What's the matter with you? Ain't you got no blood in your veins? Go get her. You're right. Now, see here. Miss Kathleen, I, I ain't afraid of him. Hey, you. Hoss, I love him. Oh, well, that's different. See, Mr. Walker. Why you ever seeing him anyway? Why is he holy? Holy, holy. I'm beautiful. You ain't one Why still? Don't even ask. Did something go wrong? Not all together. I didn't get to court her none. She's already courting another feller. Craig bought her. She's gonna marry him as soon as her Paul gets out of jail. Reason her Paul went to jail. Forget it. Like you said. Yeah. Don't need a mask. Well, uh, I'll put these in some water for you. Thanks, Joe. indoors. Oh, I almost forgot now how silent the nights can be here. I'd almost forgotten so many things that happened here. Well, six years is a long time to be away. Well, I had to have an Eastern education or father wouldn't have been happy. I say, dear boy, haven't you noticed how terribly cultured I've become? Well, no, actually, I've been too busy noticing how you've grown up. And how you have grown up. You are still sweet, little Joe. Just as sweet as I remembered you. Oh, look! Look, there's the North Star. I studied astronomy in school, I'll have you know. Well, I think that's fabulous. You can help us navigate in case we get lost. Jed, that Laurie of yours is sure a lovely gal. Daughter any father be proud of. Well, I don't mind telling you, Ben, I was scared to death when she got off that stagecoach yesterday. <laughs> you know, it suddenly hit me that maybe after all those years in Boston, she might not like it out here anymore. Yeah. You know, her grandmother never stopped thinking of me as some sort of savage Westerner. Well, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, Lori's back. It's as if she'd never left. You know, Ben, during those last years when Mildred was so sick, she worried about how Laurie would get along after she was gone. You did the right thing, sending her off to school like that. I also remember how high a value Mildred placed in education. Yes, I, I guess she would be proud of her. Everybody seems to take to Laurie, don't they, Ben? Yeah. Including my little brother, Joe, if I can read the signs. Listen, Hoss, your little brother's not so little anymore. Matter of fact, I wouldn't mind having him in my family. Well, who knows? <laughs> How many are you up on any, I cleave? 1,642. Yeah. Right now, I slipped up. Get over this beautiful sky and the fragrance of those pines. Yeah. A girl could lose her mind on a night like this. Especially with a handsome young escort like you. Well, thank you very much, ma'am. Now that I'm back, little Joy, I hope that we're going to be seeing a lot of each other. Oh, I hope so, too. I guess we should be getting back to the house. I, uh, I 
think you're right. Are you really sure that... that you want to go back to the house now? You shut up! Now, wait a minute, Jed. Give the boy a chance to explain. Explain what? Isn't it clear what he was trying to do to her? all morning, Pa? Six years we've been waiting for her to come home. And now this. You feeling all right, Laurie? I'll be all right. Honey, about last night... Please. I've known that boy all his life. I just can't bring myself to believe that he would do such a thing. I told you what happened. Don't you believe me? Oh, of course I do, darling. I was just going to say that... Daddy! All right. All right, Laurie. We won't talk about it. Um, why don't you have something to eat? No, I don't feel like eating. I... I'm going for a ride. I'd like to get about five minutes alone with that Joe Cartwright. Now, look, you just leave the Cartwrights to me. What's going on here, Cleve? What are you doing? What does it look like we're doing? There hadn't been a fence between these properties in 20 years. Yeah, well, there is now. And it's going to get bigger. You got anything to say, rough boy? Well, look, just how are we going to get out to the herds on the northwest section? I don't know. How are you going to get out to the herds on the northwest section? It cost us a half a day just going around the... Nobody the... asked you, saddle tramp. Hold it. hold it, hold it, Stark. All right, let's get back to work. Any time you got the stomach for a little real trouble, you just come around. We'll be here. Poor Joe. Hello, Jed. I'm just coming over to see you, Ben. Well, good. Jed, you know, this talk about fences and all that, why we've been friends for such a long time. That friendship is over, Ben. I just wanted you to know that I'm of no mind to see any violence. Well, of course, nobody wants to see any violence, but... Whether there is violence is entirely up to you. Up to me? You and your family. You respect that fence, there won't be any trouble. Otherwise... <laughs> look, Chad, I don't know what you and I are doing talking about fences. Why, look, about last night... The fence stays, Ben. Don't cross it.
Cartwright, Joe. How you doing, Bill? What brings you to town? Well, you know that little uh, little triangle of land between the Ponderosa and the Ferguson property? <laughs> Strange that you should ask about that. Strange? Why? Jed Ferguson was in this morning and bought it. Well, first he builds the fences, and now this. He hasn't got any dang use for that piece of land, but he knows it's going to cost us half a day every time we have to ride out to the northwest section. Jed Ferguson bought it. Well, no point in fuming about it. All right, son. I'll buy a drink before we go home. It's been a dusty day. Thanks, Will. Good day. You done, Mr. Cartwright? Uh, howdy, Mr. Cartwright. Howdy, little Joe. How you doing? Haven't seen you folks for quite a spell. How's everything? Oh, just fine, thank you. A uh, couple of beers? Yeah, sounds good. Please. Look who's here. Hello, Cleve. What's the matter, rough boy? Not talking? Just talk to girls, huh? That's about all you can handle, I guess. I can take that. Another beer, please. Oh, is this supposed to be for Rough Boy here? If you mean little Joe, that's who I drew it for. I beg your pardon. <laughs> How impolite of me. Here. I'm sorry, rough boy. Wasn't that clumsy of me? Oh, oh I'm gonna enjoy this. Now, just a minute, fellas. Mr. Carter, can't you do something? <laughs> Take care of the drinks and the damage. Joseph, let's go. Clay! Didn't I tell you to stay away from the Cartwrights? To leave things to me? But no, you had to go and pick a fight. I couldn't help it, Pa. When I saw them come in, and that cocky little... little Joe acting as if nothing had ever happened. Oh. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Larry. I better get started breaking in that new batch of horses, Pa. All right, I'll be out in a minute. Oh, Cleve, it's such a beautiful day. Why don't you come riding with me? I wish I could, sis, but I've got work to do. I heard about the fight. It was all on account of me, wasn't it? No, it had nothing to do with you. Just something personal between me and little Joe. Those Cartwrights, they think they run everything. But they're going to find out fast that they don't. Well, I'll just bet that little Joe looks a lot worse than you do. Yeah. I hope I didn't say anything wrong, Father. Cleve seemed upset. Oh, he's just a bit touchy now. He'll get over it. How's my little girl today? <laughs> Your little girl is just fine, Father. Oh, it's good to see you laugh again. I'm glad you're not, uh, you know... Well, I'm not going to allow a silly little incident to upset all our lives. Well, I don't want my little girl to think about it. Not ever. We'll settle that account in our own way, Cleve and I. All right, Daddy. Laurie, I'm sure you know as well as I do that the uh, men around here are a different breed from the men you must have met back east. <laughs> yes, I found that out in a hurry. You're a very pretty girl. Lots of men are going to be after you, and uh, 
Well, all I'm trying to say is be careful, dear. Don't, um, well, you know, don't encourage them. What kind of a girl do you take me for? Well, you know what I mean, honey. Yes. Yes, I know what you mean. And you don't have to worry, Daddy. You know, your mother, God rest her, was a gentle, sensitive woman. And I know she would have wanted me to. No. Don't you talk about my mother. Laurie, I'm just trying to tell you that... No. No, I don't want to hear you talk about my mother. Laurie, where are you going? I'm going for a ride. No, honey. Honey, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have talked the way I did about it. I don't want to hear any more about it. Morning, ma'am. Good morning. I'm Laurie Ferguson. Yes, ma'am, I know. I've seen you. Well, I'm sorry I didn't see you. Yes, ma'am. What's your name? Brett, ma'am. Brett. What a nice name. By the way, my name is not ma'am. I told you it's Laurie. Yes, ma'am. I mean Laurie. That's better, Brett. Well, I guess you want your horse. Thank you. Sure is a fine-looking horse, ma'am. Do you like fine-looking things, Brett? Well, sure. So do I. They make me feel good. They excite me. What do you do with them, Brett? I don't know what you mean, ma'am. Laurie. I mean Laurie. I mean, is that all you do? Just look at fine-looking things? No, I, I don't just look. Well, what do you do, Brett? Or don't you do anything? Or are you just afraid? Did you like that, Brett? Did you enjoy kissing me? Yes, well. I sure. <laughs> Better get off this ranch as fast as you can, Brett. Because if my father or my brother see you after this, they're gonna kill you. Oh, well, Miss Carter. Look, uh, Brandon in this hot weather is going to be bad enough. Why do we have to take the long way around to that northwest section? I thought I made that perfectly clear, Stock. We're keeping out the Ferguson property. Well, look, that means we're going to waste a whole half day just getting out there. Well, then I guess you'd better get moving, huh? All loaded, Stark. I sure don't count on that long drive out. <laughs> All on account of one skirt these uh, fancy cart rides don't know how to handle. Well, what the boss don't know won't hurt him, will it? Got an idea? Mm-hmm. Climb on. I know a strip the Fergusons ain't friends yet. Turn 
off those trees up there. Are you sure you know what you're doing, Stark? Oh, yeah, we won't have any trouble. Ferguson's got no reason to be out this way. I'd sure like to run into that skirt out here, though. I know how to handle her. <laughs> before somebody gets killed. You got any ideas? Yeah, you just keep them occupied. Guns out in front of you. I said, throw them out in front of you. Goes for your pistol, too, Cleve. and I stood up, I'd have shot you down right where you stand. Now, both of you, get out of here. Won't end here, Joe. That's up to you, Cleve. Come on. Let's get moving. Hey, Stark! Yeah? Where do you think you're going with that wagon? Start to Brandon. You're on Ferguson property. Well, just taking a little shortcut. This part ain't fenced off anyway. You turn that wagon around. I catch you on Ferguson land again. You pick up your time and keep moving. I uh, guess he means it. Turn around. I thought you said you were all right. Oh, it's just a crease. It's all right. Come on, let's get home. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's fine. Well, I guess we better just stay off of that property. That's about the only thing we can do. Well, there's something I can do. I can get Laura to tell the truth. Joe, you try talking to that girl and somebody's going to get killed, namely you. He's right, Joe. Best thing to do in a situation like this is wait it out till everybody cools down. Look, Paul... Lori goes riding every morning. If I could just go out there and talk to her, I could get the whole thing cleared up. Joe, I'm telling you, if you get caught on that property, they'll shoot you down. I'll speak to Jed again. Come on, Pi. You spoke to him once. What good did it do? Look, staying clear of the property's not going to help anything because it's not going to clear me. Can't you see that?
Sorry, I want to talk to you. So that's what you were waiting here for? Yeah, that's right. I think it's about time we got this whole thing settled. There's nothing to settle. Aren't you going to help me down off this horse? Well, in order to do that, I'd have to cross this fence your family built. You're not going to worry about a silly little fence, are you? Look, Laurie, my brother Hoss was almost killed yesterday because of this fence, and so was your own brother Cleve. And you know the reason why. I don't know what you're talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, you're going to have to tell your father the truth. The truth? The truth about what happened between you and me at the Ponderosa. Look, your father's a reasonable man. If you just, just explain to him it was an accident, that your dress was torn by mistake, I'm sure that... You mean you want me to lie? Lie? Well, that's not how it happened, little Joey. Why are you doing this to me? Look, Lori, I don't... Don't touch me! Don't you touch me! to it and she started hitting me with this thing when i took it away from her she rode off oh if she'd just quit lying this whole thing would be solved in a jiffy i don't know if she's lying oh pa you don't think that i no, really had no, no of course not laurie may think she's telling the truth what's that supposed to mean i've known her ever since she was a little girl since she was born laurie was always a Sensitive little girl. Very much like Mildred, her mother. Yeah. I guess when her mother fell off that horse and became paralyzed, that didn't help her much, did it? Well, it was a hard time for everybody, but particularly for Lori. She became even more withdrawn. And then her grandmother came out from the east to take care of everybody. That wasn't a very happy time for Jed, I can tell you. Well, she blamed Jed for everything, for the accident, for the lingering illness, the paralysis, even blamed her for Mildred's death. And then she forced Jed to let her take Laurie back east with her. I still, I still don't see how this fits in with the way Laurie's acting now. Well, I know it may seem far-fetched, but there's a connection somehow. A person is caught between two opposing forces. On the one hand, there's Laurie's father. Now, Laurie loves her father, we know that. On the other hand, there's Laurie's grandmother. And she hates Jed, we know that. And there's no telling what, what her grandmother could have, could have said to Laurie to change her, because that girl has changed. Something is eating away at her. Jed Ferguson. Jed? I want to talk to you, Ben. All right, come inside. Outside will do. I'll get right to the point. It's only out of regard for our former friendship that little Joe's still alive. But believe me, Ben, he's pushed his luck beyond the limit. Jed, the only reason little Joe... Now, I don't want to argue with you about it. I'm just telling you. Keep him away from my daughter. That's all I got to say.
Come in. Hi, honey. I saw your light. Just thought I'd come in and say good night. Is everything all right, Daddy? Yes. Yes, I, I, I just had some business to take care of. Laurie. Yes? The picture of your mother by my bed. It's missing. Missing? Yes. Do you know anything about it? No. Well, we'll look for it in the morning. Good night, dear. Good night, Daddy. Good night. as cool as that grass you're sitting in. And you're breathing real nice and easy, like a frisky young coat. You're that Laurie Ferguson, ain't you? Who are you? Well, I ain't gonna tell you. Not just yet, anyway. Now, you've been uh, fooling around with that Joe Cartwright, and uh, you know what a waste of time that is, don't you? What you need, Laurie, is a man. A real man. Like me. What do you mean? I may not be so rich and so fancy, but one thing I know how to handle is a woman. What makes you think I'd be interested in someone like you? Don't bother me too much what you think you're interested in. Because I know. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like me a woman that fights. And now, honey, I'm going to show you how a man teams himself a little wildcat. <laughs> well, now I know you and me are going to be good friends. Because we're going to have. Let's go take a look. What happened? Oh, that Laurie, Joe, she, she's crazy. She, she 
she grabbed my gun. And she's meaner than a she-wolf, Joe. Crazy. Come on, let's get him. Let's get him to the dock. I'm going to go over and try to talk some sense into Mr. Ferguson. Now, don't go messing around, Joe. This here's work for the sheriff. You just get him to the dock as quick as you can. Honey, you needn't be afraid of me. I'm your father. I'm just gonna go get the doctor. I'll be right back. I'm not up to anything. I'm just going in to get the doctor. You're not going to leave me sick in bed to die while you go into town to see another woman. I'll see you dead first. What are you talking about? I'm your father. I know who you are. And you're not going to leave me sick in bed to die like you left my mother while you go off with another woman. Laurie, in heaven's name, who are you talking about? What woman? You know what woman? you brought in this house every day while my mother was dying. <sighs> Lori, she was a neighbor, a friend of Mildred's. That's all she was, nothing but a friend. No, no, she's not my friend, not my friend. And I'm not going to stay in bed and die. Lori, please, let me get the doctor. You're not well. You're imagining all sorts of strange Don't things. Don't you move. Take one more step, 
and I'm gonna shoot you. Ari, please listen to me. No! No, I listen to you. I listen to you every night. You and she alone downstairs laughing, laughing your disgusting laughter. While my mother was upstairs in bed dying, dying! Because you brought her out here to die, to die among savages, savages, savages like you. No, Lori, I loved her. I loved your mother. You loved her? And that other woman, that, that friend? That's all she was, a friend. She was a good friend of your mother's as well as mine. No, you're lying! You're lying! She was your lover! She was your lover! Is that what she told you, Laurie? What are you doing here? What do you want? Is that what she made you believe, your grandmother? Go away! Go away! Don't come any nearer! Be careful, little child. She teach you all this hatred. To hate your father, to hate all men. To make you feel the bitterness she could never make your mother feel. I don't want to hear anymore. I don't want to listen to you. Laurie, give me the gun. Don't move. Don't touch me. You come any closer and I'll shoot you. Laurie, what are you afraid of? He killed her. He killed my mother with his lies. She lay upstairs in that bed, dying, thinking of him downstairs with another woman. And it killed her. Laurie, there was never anyone but your mother, and she knew it. We loved each other. It's true that that woman, and she was a good woman, would come in sometimes to help. She tried to cheer me, to, to make me laugh, to put up a pot of coffee or cook some supper, because Mildred wanted it that way. But I never loved anyone but your mother. No! You're lying! You're lying! Did your grandmother ever tell you how your father worked and sacrificed himself to build up this ranch? Just for you and Cleve. Did she ever tell you why your father never remarried again after your mother died? Because there wasn't another woman in this whole world that he could love. Did she ever tell you what everybody in Virginia City knows? That your father just lived for the day you could come back here and be with him. To me to put back in my wall again. What's the doctor say, Pa? Well, it'll be a long pull, but eventually he feels that she'll be all right. Oh, well, sure, happy to hear that. Ben, I just can't find the words to. Jed, there's no need to, you know that. I'm mighty proud of your boy. 
So am I. Joe, those fences are coming down in the morning. We're out there to help you take them down. Well, fences never did make for good neighbors. Never found a fence yet that was a substitute for understanding. Now, Jed, didn't you have some good ruby port wine around here somewhere? Ben, I know exactly where it is. Come on. Thank you. What seems to be the matter, sir? You know dang well what the matter is. I've been chasing you and that highfalutin granddaughter of yours with that warrant and them bills through three counties. Now, you're going to pay every penny of them bills you left behind, or you're going to spend the next 50 years in the calaboose. Sir... Colonel Robert Fairchild is not accustomed to being addressed as a vagrant and a lackey. I find your gross insinuations a little bit more than I can bear. I am a member of Southern aristocracy, sir. Mister, I don't care if you're Stonewall Jackson. You're going to pay them bills you and your granddaughter ran up, or you're going straight to jail. Grandfather, I believe I'm going to faint. Yeah. What seems to be the trouble? Uh, who might you be? Oh, I happen to be a friend of Colonel Fairchild's and his granddaughter. Well, let's hope you're a good enough friend to bail him out, because if you ain't, they're going with me to jail. Um, what's the amount? $122.68 exactly. I believe that this will cover it. Oh. And, uh, here's a bit more to, uh, cover your expenses. Oh, well, <laughs> Yeah, I reckon so, mister. Uh, hey, Colonel, you got some mighty good friends. Yeah, and rich, too. Well, I thank you a lot, mister, and so long. So long. I told you to keep out of trouble. Geller, it's not all Grandpa's fault. I... Shut up. Oh, come on now, Jack, my boy. You can't possibly be inferring that Colonel Robert Fairchild is... Uh... Don't try that corn pone charm on me, you old fraud. You just shut up and listen. Now, I'm on to something. Something pretty big this time. There's a horse named Clancy that's owned by some hotshot kid on a big spread just the other side of Virginia City. Now, I've been watching him work out. And the horse and the kid are pretty good, but I think we can take them for plenty if we work it right. Magnificent. Splendid, my boy, splendid. Yeah, well, there's only one hitch, though, uh, Fairchild. I think maybe you know the kid's father. Yeah, well, what's his name? Who is he? His name's Cartwright. Cartwright? right? I don't... Ben Cartwright? Yes? Why, of course I know him. <laughs> That was sure a good ride, Joe. Real good ride. Fastest mile I ever saw a horse run, Joe. Well, if I could just get something to run him against, I think his horse would beat anybody. <laughs>
Yes, sir. Two fine kids and two beautiful horses. Yeah, they surely are. Hey, I thought you were going to let him out there for a minute. Not on your life, little Joe. You'll see Jeff Davis run when we race and not before. Oh. Tires out easy, huh? Is that why he got that pancake on his back instead of a saddle? <laughs> that saddle is the latest thing in racing equipment. Standard in all eastern races now. Well, maybe, but I still don't see how you ride with your knees up around your chin. You'll see when we race. That is, if you'll ever get gumption to race your Clancy against my Jeff Davis. What do you think, Clancy? Come on. You know that uh, horse of little Joe is Clancy. He's out of the Truxton strain. That's Andy Jackson's champion. Oh, well, about Andy. But Jeff Davis has bloodlines, too, you know. Oh, he's a good-looking horse. Uh, you know, Patty Lou is just dying to match him. And maybe Clancy there might be just the horse to find out how good Jeff Davis really is. Well, we could find out that way, I'll tell you. Yeah, a race between them mightn't be a bad idea. Yeah. Hey, that's a good horse. That's a good horse. You believe it's uh, Minju time? <laughs> yes, sir. A horse race is a thing of beauty. Surely is. Mm -hmm. Hey, Patty Lou. Better pull that blanket up over his ears. You don't want that old crow bait to catch cold. Little Joe, go walk under a snake's belly. <laughs> Keys to the Wally Global. Well, turpentine, lemon extract, and honey. Nothing better to cure the Wally Globals. Hey, uh, how'd the workout go, anyhow? Fine. Little Joe says he'll race his Clancy against my Jeff Davis. Ain't that just like that, Little Joe? Warm up a race first thing. He's liable to be surprised this time, though. We ain't had a gal around here that could set a saddle like you. Well, I do thank you. As a matter of fact, we ain't had many around here as pretty as you either. Horse Cartwright, I do believe you're sweet talking me. Would you mind if I was? I'd be disappointed if you didn't. Sorry, fellas, it looks like another winner. I keep telling you, poker is not my game. Will you excuse me, gentlemen? Yeah, sure. One thing I like is a good loser. You'll never find a better one. Yeller never won a hand or anything else. They come to think of it, you're right. I'm starting to feel real bad taking his money. There's enough food in there for a week. Is everything shaping up, Governor? You just keep this horse in condition. When the time comes, I'll let you know. I was just going to give him his morning workout. Give me a leg up, will you, Governor? Right. How did Clancy do today, son? Uh, he's getting better every day, Colonel. Uh, no horse around it can beat him. Oh, now, wait a minute. <laughs> Your Patty Lou has a horse, too, you know. I reckon we'll just have to set a date for that race, Ben, don't you think? What do you say, Mr. Cartwright? Yeah, I'm sure for it, Pop. Yeah, come on, Paul. The whole town's excited about it. Wait a minute now. Don't, don't 
all come at me at once. I didn't say no. Set your date. Have your race. Oh, thank you, Mr. Cartwright. It is all right with you, isn't it, Grandfather? Why, of course, my dear. Yeah, what harm can come of good, clean fun? Well, horse, shall we go and have a look at that ailing dog of yours? Anytime you're ready, Colonel. Yeah, I promised the uh, horse that I'd give him a little assistance. Daughter, will you join us? I'd love to, Grandfather. Colonel. Race horses, sick dogs. I guess he's an authority on just about everything. Yes, he's quite a man. He had a lovely wife. Big plantation. Acres of the most beautiful bluegrass. Oh, what happened? I don't know. I don't know if anything happened. I don't like to ask him. I I just have a feeling he's lost it all. Where's your granddaughter? Uh, well, she's tending Jeff Davis. Didn't I tell you I want both of you here when we have a meeting? Well, now, we must be circumspect, you know. Those Cartwrights are no fools. What have you done about the race? Yeah, well, we're working on it. Patty Lou and I are working on it. Well, what's taken so long? Well, now, don't you worry, Geller. The race will be soon. Ben Cartwright is arranging the whole thing. Good. I've got the yokels primed and ready. I've been playing cards with them, dropping a few hundred. They don't believe I could win a two-horse race if I owned both horses. Me. Hey. And don't you forget your promise. The Cartwrights are not to be hurt. Well, you just remember your end of it. I don't want any more slip-ups like El Paso. Oh, now that was an accident. You were drunk, Fairchild. And your granddaughter was mixed up with some bronc buster. Well, a child is entitled to be in love. Don't give me any excuses. I'm telling you. Another slip-up like that, it's going to be your last one. And some people you like and some people you don't like. I don't... <clears throat> too well. This horse is going to take a whole lot more work before he's ready for Clancy. Just you watch him in the race. Yeah, well, don't you go underestimating Clancy, our little Joe. I'm not underestimating him. But Jeff Davis here now, he's just born to win, that's all. <laughs> Looks like you made a friend there. We did help her to get well, didn't we, Hoss? Yeah. Had a little about this race. Sure wouldn't want to see you get hurt. Oh, that's the sweetest thing. You know, you and your brother and your pa, you've become very dear to me, you know that? Well, I tell you, we, we sort of took a fancy to you and your grandpa, too. Yes, sir. Salubrious. That's just the very word for this climate. <laughs> that's a good word. <laughs> yes, sir, it's a fine, healthy place, that's for sure. Yeah, you've made a fine spot for yourself here, Ben. Uh, I'm right proud of you. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty. Colonel, how much do you like it here? Well, I'll say I like it just about as much as any place I've ever seen. Well, you know, I, uh, 
I, I don't mean to pry, you know that. Had a thought occur to me last night. Well, let's hear it, Ben. Let's hear it. How would you like to settle down here? Here? On the Ponderosa? Why not? There's all the room in the world for everybody and then some. Got a fine cab on the other side of uh, Northeast Pasture where you could settle down there and raise your thoroughbred horses and make yourself a good life. A fine life. Well, Ben, that's it. That's right kind of you to offer us a home and a place to settle down. Well, I've never forgotten what you did for Horses, mother and me. When we were on our way out here, she was so sick and had no money, no friends, until you and your wife. Yes, I remember. Uh, but Ben, I, I think maybe I ought to talk it over with Patty Lou first. Uh, you see, we were considering uh, San Francisco and uh, forgetting all about the horse race and. Ben, I, I, I just don't know how to thank you. Well, I do know how you can thank me. By accepting the offer. And anyway, you're not going to wiggle out of that horse race. Little Joe would raise you from here to San Francisco. <laughs> Good. Talk to Patty, though. You shall do that, Ben. I'll do that. I don't know why I can't win. Just one hand. I'm sorry, fellas. You're lucky, O'Leary. I've sat here all day with second best hands. All day long. Gentlemen. How you doing, Joe? Hey, Joe. Uh, not too bad. How about you? Hey, you all going to the race? Wouldn't miss it. You uh, wouldn't care to lay a little bet, would you? You going to daylight that Tennessee horse, or you want to lay some odds, or what? Did you say a Tennessee horse? Yeah, Tennessee running horse. Has that horse got a name? Mm-hmm. Name's Jeff Davis. From Tennessee? With a name like Jeff Davis? <laughs> well, I don't think I'd mind putting a few dollars on him. Uh, well, what, what do you call a few dollars, mister? How about a hundred? You got yourself a bet. Good. Hey, George, I've never seen you guess right yet, Geller. If Geller's back in Jeff Davis, I'm going along with little Joe. Hey, that's for me, too. I'll take some of that money, say 250 I got 200 clients you'll outrun Jeff Davis. Well, you're all covered. I'll take any amount on Jeff Davis. As a matter of fact, I uh, might even raise my bet. But then I don't figure you got much uh, cash behind you. Yeah, well, I got enough to take you on, mister. How about 5000 <laughs> Well? Hmm? Oh. <clears throat> sure. Sure, you got yourself a bet. Sure. <clears throat> well, deal. Oh, what's the matter, Sonny? You uh, want to back out of the bet? Huh? Uh, no, no, I just... <clears throat> I was, I'm just going to pay for my beer. dollars Is that what you call a friendly horse race? Well, now, look, you listen now for a minute, Bob. Now, you'd have done exactly the same thing if, uh, if you'd have been in my place. This Geller was so cocksure... I don't care how cocksure uh, of himself anybody is. Call off that bet. I can't do call that. Call it off. Call it off right now. Right now. Where are you going to get $5,000? 5000 Well, I I have some of the money saved. I've saved a little... Oh, money. really? You got some of the money? How much of the money have you got saved? I got about uh, $200. $200? Isn't that wonderful, little Joe? You've got $200. That means you've only got to get about $4,800. Well, I, I, I thought you could give me a little advance on my wages. Look, Paul, I put a clock on that Jeff Davis, and there ain't no way he can outrun old Clancy. Clancy will outrun him every day of the week and twice on Sunday. What's that got to do with what we're talking about? Tell you what it's got to do with it. There ain't no way little Joe can lose. That's what. I'll tell you what, Joe, I'll put all my money in with you. Oh, fine. How much money have you got? <laughs> I've got, uh... 
Well, that's, that's quite remarkable. You've got $180, you've got $200, that makes $380. Where are you going to get the... Cut, call this thing off. Well, now, look, it's, it's not just Hoss and I. I mean, there's a lot of upstanding people. There's Fairley, o O'Leary. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What have Fairley and O'Leary got to do with this? Well, they're, they're betting on Clancy. They got about $500 bet on him. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Now you've got the whole town betting on this race. <laughs> just great. Howdy, Ben. Little joke. I don't. All right, Clem. Uh, uh, Clem, uh, you come on with us, huh? Excuse me, fellas. Hey, Ben, good to see you. This here's Jack Geller. Geller? Mr. Cartwright? Maybe now we can do some real business. I think the business you have is with my son here. He doesn't back out of things, does he? No, he doesn't back out of things. Five thousand dollars here, you can count it and hold a bet. The other party's ready to put up. Here's my five thousand. Well, well, here I understand you and the boys are backing Clancy and Little Joe, is that right? Well, we just want to get in on a good thing. <laughs> we figure Little Joe will win by a mile. Yeah, I think you could just do that. <laughs> if you feel that way, how about doubling the bet? Well, a uh, five thousand dollar bet is fine with me. Thank you. <laughs> Well, what's the matter? Don't you think the horse is any good? All right, we'll double that bet, Sheriff. You come with us to the bank, I'll get you the other 5,000. Let that be a lesson to you. Let it be a lesson to me. Patty Lou, this horse is going to look great. Yes, I know. What's the matter? Something wrong? I wish I'd never gotten little Joe into this. You, uh, you heard about all the betting in town, huh? It's all my fault. Oh, it ain't. Little Joe and Paul are both big boys. Besides, little Joe figures he's going to beat you anyhow. But he hasn't got a chance. I wouldn't be too sure about that unless you got some idea of making old Jeff Davis sprout wings or something. Uh, did your grandpa mention to you the proposition that Paul made him about you two staying here on the Ponderosa with us? Yes. Oh, Hoss, you're the nicest person in the whole world. You all are. Well, we had... Hey, are you coming with me? Yes, Grandpa. I promised Grandpa I'd ride up to the lake with him. Well, you go right ahead. We'll finish this little talk later. Later, yes. Bye for now, ho. So long, Colonel. It's no wonder they call him Lightning, Governor. He was great today. Well, just so he's that way tomorrow for the race. He will be. All right, let's get back to the barn. Give that die time to set up. Is anybody there, Patty Lou? No, they must be running lightning. Now, remember, Grandpa, I'm to do the talking. Well, now, Patty Lou, I think it'd be much better if you let me do the talking. You know how you two clash. We have to stand up to him. We have to make him listen this once. Yes, yes, we, we do indeed. And I have every intention of doing that very thing. It means our future, our lives, and our happiness, Grandpa. I know that. I know it. Archer, get the die. I want you to put the die on that horse now, Fairchild, so it'll look more natural by tomorrow. Uh, just a minute, Giller. My granddaughter and I wish to consult with you. Hey, Snowden, get a blanket on that horse and cool him off. Sure, Governor. Grandfather and I have something to discuss with you. Yes. Well, now, the only thing we've got to discuss is that die job on Lightning. 
You better make sure it's a good one, because I don't want anybody to suspect that he's not Jeff Davis. Well, I'll do that, of course, but you... And you, Patty Lou, you get up on top tomorrow, and you stay there. Grandfather and I want to call off the race. You want a what? You can call off the bet. You wouldn't lose anything. Well, you've already lost something. Your silly southern cracker mind. Now, hold on, Geller. We've got a bit of news. The Cartwrights have asked us to stay at the Ponderosa. That's right. They want us to settle down and maybe raise a few colts out of Jeff Davis and earn an honest living. An honest living? You two? Why, she's nothing but a... Now mind what you say about my granddaughter. Oh, I am sorry. I forgot I was talking to a lady. A real southern lady. Geller, don't you see? It's another chance for us. I'm begging you to let us have it. Well, you only get one chance in this life, and you had yours a long time ago. One more chance, please. Before... Before it's too late. Listen, you and him, you had your plantation and you had your mint tulips and you had your big society balls. But you had them all and you threw them away. Well, now it's my turn. I'm top dog. Everything I got is bet on that race tomorrow. And if you think I'm going to throw that away for a couple of silly frauds trying to go straight. Killer, I'm warning you. You can't make me race. Oh, I can't, can't I? There have been too many races, Patty Lou. Too many towns you've been thrown out of. What do you think is going to happen when the Cartwrights discover the truth about the old colonel and dear sweet Patty Lou? Come, Grandfather. I die. Let's get at it. And there's one more thing. If you two try anything tomorrow, I'll see to it that there isn't one live cart right left to collect a bet. Is that clear? for you earlier. Uh, will you tell him that the colonel is indisposed? Yes, Grandfather, I will. Oh, uh, Patty Lou, what happened to us? Now, now. <laughs> Everything's going to be all right, darling. I could have killed Gilla for talking to you like that. I could have killed him. Now, now, don't you fret about what Gilla says. <laughs> I don't even listen to him. I was lacking the courage. Or I sure would have killed him. Uh, I tied the cup, Grandpa. Patty Lou, it's all my fault. Yes, well, it now. is. Yes, it is. My drinking, my gambling. Now. It lost the plantation. Killed your mother, it did. Don't talk like that. It's as much my fault as it is yours. Yeah, no, no. We're two of a kind, Grandpa. No, 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 no. no I no, found no, Don't Geller. talk like this. I wanted, I wanted excitement and beautiful clothes and travel. I know. My, how could I, I ever know. be so selfish and <laughs> foolish to think that I, I could love a man like Geller? I know, I know. Oh, Grandpa. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't cry, honey. Don't cry. <laughs> you try and get some sleep, Grandpa. Just 
go to sleep. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get some sleep. Look so unhappy. Grandpa, what if I lose? What if something happens to the Cartwrights because. Now you leave that to me. But I want you to ride lightning today as you've never ridden before. Grandpa, what are you going to do? Yeah, well, don't worry nothing. But I will if you don't tell me. Yeah, I assure you it'll be nothing rash. dear to me, Grandpa. Well, the feeling is mutual. <laughs> now, you've got to win this race for Patty Lou. It is your race today, Lightning. Don't forget that, huh? About time, boys. Take care of the bets, Clem, huh? They're mighty heavy. there by the buggy. Well, he's got a rifle. And if Joe is first over that finish line, he is going to drop him right under that banner. See Hoss there? Well, Larcher, there. It's gonna drop him in the excitement. The crowd noise ought to cover up the gunshot. And I'm gonna take care of Papa Cartwright. You'll never get away with this. Oh, yes, I will. We are going to grab the money and get out of here before the excitement dies down. 
We're gonna leave you and the Colonel to face the mob, and I think just possibly they're liable to be in a hanging mood. So think it over. Need it. Well, that fancy breeding sure does change the appearance of a horse, don't it? Leg me up, horse. I don't know, Joe. It's, it's going to be a race, I can tell you that. Well, don't look so worried, brother. I hate to beat a pretty girl like Patty Lou, but I just don't have any choice. Neither do I, little Joe. I'm afraid I'm really going to have to daylight you. Good luck. Good luck to you, little Joe. Yeah, good luck to both of you. Are you all set? You bet. All set. Patty Lou's acting sort of funny, not like her old self. Patty Lou? Yeah. She was nervous with the beginning of the race and all. I think there's more to it than that. Huh? What do you mean? <sighs> that horse she's riding. He ain't Jeff Davis. What are you talking about? I'm talking about a ringer. That's what I'm talking about. That horse is a lot longer between the stifle and the hock, and he's a lot faster. I can tell the way he took off. I, I couldn't believe that they'd, they'd run a ringer in on us. I ain't saying they did. I ain't saying they didn't either. That burn it. Patty Lou would have to know about it. She wouldn't let nobody near that horse but me. I'm the only one that ever did take a real good close look at him. Where's the colonel? He was here just a minute ago. I don't know. I'll, I'll take this side. You take this side. We gotta find him. Gaylor, I must talk with you. Not now, you old fool. Right now. What is this, Fairchild? We can't talk here. Around the air. Have you gone out of your mind? Now, Keller. I want you to get out of town before this race is over and take your men with you. I can't go through with it. You're in this up to your ears. Do you want to see your granddaughter go to jail? You know dang well I don't. But I don't want to see the Cartwrights hurt either. So make up your mind pretty quick. All right, Colonel. You win. Take all the money, and they'll kill you, and, and horse, and little, little Joe. Uh, who are you talking about, Colonel? Who? Uh, Gilla and the, the others.
Clem. You seen Paul or the Colonel? No, I haven't seen him, Hoss. Pay up, Doc. Hurry. They're coming home. The gray's still leading by one length. in the San Francisco bank in full payment for Jeff Davis and Lightning. Are you sure now, Ben? Well, I'll tell you the way I look at it now. Clancy needs a couple of stable mates. And you never know when one of the family may want to start a whole string of racing horses. <laughs> well, they'll sure have a good start. <laughs> well, Ben, what is there left to save for two old friends like you and me? Something I've wanted to save and haven't. It's been good to see you. I abuse your hospitality, oh, Ben. No. It won't do for me to ask you forgiveness. Uh, we've known each other too long for that kind of talk. We're friends. Good friendship. And I thank you for that, Ben. I thank you kindly. Hoss? Hoss? Weren't you even going to come and say goodbye? Oh, I sure was, Patty Lou, but I was, I was looking for you going away present. And... And I found her over there under a bench. And she said she'd sure like to go with you. What you want her? Uh, 
Oh, do I? Little Joe? Yeah, Betty Lou? I would be surprised if you don't turn into a fair riding man someday. Well, thank you. That's very kind. Of course, you got a lot to learn. But with a little bit of perseverance, there's no telling what might happen. Take good care of him, Jeff Davis. Bye, Lightning. Well, what's this? I didn't steal him, Mr. Cartwright. Hoss gave it to me. <laughs> Hazel, you going a long trip? There we are. Thank <laughs> you. You know, Hazel, you look like an intelligent little one. Yes, sir, you look like you had a lot of sense, yeah. I wonder if we could teach her to talk. Grandfather! Get out. Whoa, goodbye. So long. <laughs>